Hello class, in this video we're going to be looking at matching and allocation problems. The learning intention of this video is for us to develop an understanding of bipartite graphs and a complete bipartite graph and for us to learn how to optimize allocations by performing the Hungarian algorithm. Let's start off by defining these terms over here. Bipartite graphs are networks that have vertices separated into two groups and you can think of one group being the supply group and the other group being the demand group. And you also have edges that flow from one data set to the other data set. So let me show you some examples of what a bipartite graph may look like. Please note that you've got vertices found on one side of the bipartite graph and all the other vertices found on the other side. And in between these vertices, you've got edges that flow from one side of the bipartite graph to the other. Another example of a bipartite graph is shown below as well. So in this example, this shows the male and female pairing preferences between six students. So as you can see, bipartite graphs are quite useful when we're trying to either show the pairings between two people or if you're trying to assign one worker to do a particular job in an overall project. Let's now talk about what is a complete bipartite graph. A complete bipartite graph has all the same features as a regular bipartite graph. However, every vertex that's found on one side of the data set will connect to all the vertices found on the other side of the data set. Let me show you an example of this. So in this example, you've got a factory with four employees and there are four different machines to operate. Every employee can use every machine. So to draw my complete bipartite graph, on one side of the data set, I'm going to name all the employees. And on the other side, I'm going to list down all the machines. Since every employee can use every machine, what we do is we draw an edge connecting an employee to every machine. So therefore, your bipartite graph should look like this. And because every vertex from one side is connected to all the vertex to the other side, we refer to this as a complete bipartite graph. A complete weighted bipartite graph will contain weights found on the actual graph itself. And these can represent the cost either in terms of time or expenditure to complete a particular task. So if you look at the example on the right hand side, you can see the time it takes for each worker to complete each of the following tasks. However, most of the time we don't actually include the weights on our bipartite graph because it actually looks very messy in that way. And it's better to represent all this information in a table or a matrix instead as shown down below. As I've stated earlier in the video, bipartite graphs are extremely useful in allocation problems whereby people are allocated to do a certain task. When allocating tasks, our overall objective is to minimize the overall cost by optimizing a task and giving it to a certain individual. So if you look on the example down on the right hand side, notice how each of the workers could perform each of the three jobs. However, the most optimized route is by giving Alan job Y. Bob job X and Carl job Z as they are able to complete all the three jobs in the lowest time possible. In this particular example, it was quite easy for us to determine what was the best job for each individual, but in most cases, these allocations would not be obvious at all. To therefore assign a job to each worker, we therefore need to apply the Hungarian algorithm so that we could find out what is the optimal allocation for each worker to do a particular activity. So let me explain how do we perform the Hungarian algorithm. We use the Hungarian algorithm when we're trying to find out what is the optimal allocation or assignment for each person to a particular activity or a particular task for an overall job or project. Now, there is a lot of steps involved for the Hungarian algorithm, but this can broadly be categorized into two main phases. In the first phase of the algorithm, what we do is we adjust values in the matrix and then we start adding horizontal or vertical lines that covers all elements that has a value of zero in the matrix. So let's say that this is the original matrix. What we do is we adjust the values and then we start adding random lines like so and we try to cover all of the zeros in the matrix. We can move into the second phase when the number of lines that we've made in the original matrix is equal to the number of assignments that are needed to be made. So in this example, because you've got three workers, we have three assignments that are needed to be made. And once these numbers are the same, the number of lines and the number of assignments, we can then draw our bipartite graph and allocate tasks to calculate what is the minimum cost or minimum time to complete all the jobs. As I've stated initially, this is an oversimplified instruction of how to apply the Hungarian algorithm. So I'm now I'm going to demonstrate in detail how to apply the Hungarian algorithm using three examples. So in example number one over here, I've got three workers as well as three tasks. Each of these workers can perform each of those tasks. And what I've got over here are the times that's taken for them to complete each task. 
Before I apply the method, what I'll do first is I'm just going to represent this particular table over here as a matrix, and I'm just going to abbreviate each of the following names as A, B, and C. Let's now apply the Hungarian algorithm. So step one reads, subtract the lowest value in each row from every element in that row. In that first row, I can see that four is the smallest number, so I'm going to minus over four. The smallest number in the second and third row are the numbers eight and seven. So what I'll do now is I'm going to create a new table where I minus each number in that row by these values over here. So if I've done that, this is what my table should now look like. Step two says, we need to draw a vertical or horizontal lines in a matrix that contains the number zero. And you want to do so by drawing the least number of lines as possible. So in this example over here, the least number of lines I could do is by drawing these three lines. I could have also done this vertically, but you can do them any way possible as long as you've got the minimum amount of lines. The next step reads, if the column does not contain a zero, we need to subtract the lowest value from every element in that particular column. If you examine the matrix table, notice how each column contains the number zero. And if that's the case, we can skip steps three all the way to six and therefore move on to step seven straight away. So the last step for us to do is we need to draw a directed bipartite graph. In order to do this, we need to kind of understand what do these values represent. In the table, we want to look for the position of where the number zero lies for that particular row or for that particular employee, as this will tell us what job is best optimized or suited for them based on their skill set. Therefore, this means that Alan should be doing job Y, Bob should be doing job X, and Carl should be doing job Z. And therefore, we can represent this on a bipartite graph like so. If the question wanted us to find out what was the minimum cost overall, what we need to do is we need to refer to the original data set. So the table says that Alan takes about 4 hours to complete job Y, 8 hours for Bob to complete job X, and Carl takes 7 hours to complete job Z. So it's therefore to find out what is the minimum cost or the minimum time overall, we just add up these values over here, and therefore your answer is going to be 19 hours. So this is the most optimized way to assign these three tasks for these three workers. Let's now look at a second example. In the second example, this matrix shows you the cost associated for each employee to complete each of these four tasks. To optimize the job allocations, we will now perform the Hungarian algorithm. So step one reads, subtract the smallest number in each row from every element. So what I've got over here are the smallest numbers found in each row. And now I'm going to create a new table where I've subtracted every element by those numbers. So if I've done this, my table should now look like this. Afterwards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw horizontal or vertical lines in the matrix to cover up the number zero. And I'm going to do this using the least number of lines as possible. In this example over here, I could do this by using two vertical lines to cover the zeros as shown here. Step three reads, if the column does not contain the number zero, we subtract the smallest number from every element that's found in that column. So in this example over here, you've got two columns that do not contain the number zero. So what I'll do is I'm going to subtract the third column by the number one and the fourth column by the number two. And in doing so, I should now have zeros in my columns. So I'm now going to create another table where I've subtracted the third and fourth column with those numbers. So therefore, this should now be my answer. Now that I've done this, I'm going to again cover all the zeros with the minimum amount of lines as possible. So in this example over here, the best way that I could cover up all the zeros with the minimum amount of lines as shown over here. Step 5 reads, we now need to add the smallest uncovered value to the elements that are covered by the two lines. Now this might be a bit hard for you to see, but if you look very closely, the number 7 and the number 0 are the numbers that are overlapping by the horizontal and vertical lines that we have drawn. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the smallest uncovered number to those two numbers over there. So the smallest uncovered number here is the number 1. So we're going to add 1 to the number 7 and 0. And for the remaining uncovered elements, we're going to subtract each of those numbers by the number 1. So if I'm going to represent this on another table, this is what my answers should now look like. Now that I've done this, I'm going to again cover all the zeros that's found on the table with the least number of lines as possible. In this example, I needed to use four lines to cover up all the zeros that's found in the table. And notice how the number of lines in this example now match the number of assignments that were needed to be made. So now I can move on to step number seven, where I could draw a directed bipartite graph. 
In order for me to draw my directed bipartite graph, all I need is this matrix over here as well as the original matrix. So I'm going to do this on the next slide. To draw my bipartite graph, what I do is I'm going to examine this matrix over here, which contains the zeros. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line in between the vertices that have a zero. So if you examine the first row here, there is a zero between vertex A and vertex P. So I'm going to draw a line between them. In row B, there's a zero between vertex R and S. So I'm going to draw two lines connecting to vertex R and S and do the same thing for the other two rows. So therefore, your graph should look like this. However, if you look at the bipartite graph, notice how worker B and worker D are somewhat multi-talented and can do two roles equally as great, but we can only give one job to each worker. So the way that we make our allocations then is we first need to start off with the least skilled worker. The least skilled worker can be identified by referring to either to the matrix or to the bipartite graph. In the matrix, the least skilled worker only contains one single zero in that particular row. So in this case over here, worker A and worker C are the least skilled workers, but you could also see that on the bipartite graph as they have only one edge. Therefore, this means that we need to assign worker A to do job P and worker C with job Q. Now we need to allocate jobs R and S. What I want to do is I want to draw your attention to worker D in this case. If you examine this row, worker D is specialized to do jobs P and jobs S. However, because we've already assigned worker A to do job P, therefore worker D will do job S. And lastly, worker B will do job R. Now that we have assigned each worker to a particular task, I can now find out what is the minimum cost or minimum time overall. So the minimum cost can be found by adding the values that I've just highlighted. So if you find up the sum, it's going to give you an answer of $64 to complete all four jobs. Let's now look at one more example so you have a better understanding of how to apply the Hungarian algorithm. So the first thing for us to do is to subtract the smallest value by every value found in each row. So these are the smallest values that I've identified in each row. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another matrix where I've subtracted every value by the smallest numbers. So this is going to be my new answer. The next step for me to do is to draw vertical or horizontal lines in the matrix that covers the number zero with the least number of lines as possible. In this example, the least number of lines I could use is three to cover all the zeros. Because this particular column over here does not contain a zero, step three wants me to therefore subtract every value in that column by the smallest value in order for me to get another zero. So the smallest value is number 10. So I'm going to now create a new table where I've minus every element in that column by 10. So therefore that's going to be my answer. What I'll do now is I'm going to cover all the zeros again with the minimum amount of lines possible. This is what my table now looks like if I cover all the zeros with the least number of lines. Step 5 reads, add the smallest uncovered value to the elements that are covered by the two lines. In this example, the smallest uncovered number is a number 10. So what I'll do is I'm going to add that number to the numbers that are covered by the two lines. So the numbers 40, I'll add 10 to that. And I'm going to subtract every other number that's uncovered by the number 10 as well. So I'm going to show this with another table. So your table should now look like this. Now that I've completed step five, what I'll do again is I'm going to cover all the zeros with the minimum amount of lines as possible. Because the number of lines matches the number of allocations that are needed to be made, I can now draw my directed bipartite graph. To draw my bipartite graph, remember that we just need to look at where the zeros lies and draw edges between those vertices. So for worker W, he specialized in doing jobs A, B, and C. So I'm gonna draw three lines like so. Worker X is specialized in B and C. Y is specialized at job D. And worker Z is good at doing jobs A. Now that I've completed drawing my bipartite graph, I'm going to start making allocations to each worker by starting with the least skilled worker. So if you look at worker Y and worker Z on the table or on the bipartite graph, they are only specialized at doing one specific job. So therefore, I'm going to assign worker Y to do job D and worker Z to do job A. The remaining jobs to be assigned is jobs B and job C. However, notice how both worker W and worker X is both specialized at doing jobs B and C. And because they're both great at doing those jobs, it doesn't actually matter which one you assign them to. So in this example, I'm going to assign worker W to do job B and worker X to do job C. Hence, the overall cost or the overall time for them to complete all the jobs can be found by adding these four values that I've highlighted. So therefore, the minimum time is going to be 130 minutes. 
By now, you should be fairly confident at applying the Hungarian algorithm to find out what is the minimum cost associated to complete all the jobs. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to please answer all the questions from exercise 15b to get further practice. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.